Non-essential basically is something that doesn't have anything to do with sustaining your life or the health or well-being of our community. So from a city of Atlanta perspective, from our government workers, who I cannot think enough. These men and women who are picking up your trash, um, our police officers, our firefighters, all of those are people we deem non-essential. Our, our people who work in the watershed department, who are making sure water is continuing to flow in our city. And then there are carve-outs for other businesses. I encourage people to go and read the order. Uh, we try to be very thoughtful what businesses might be considered essential. So certainly a grocery store, even a hardware store, or I, I saw something on social media that someone said a bike shop might be considered essential because people use bikes for transportation. That's understandable. So if there are businesses that we miss, um, we will uh, update our order accordingly. Um, but I encourage people to look at the order, determine if, if your business is included, I've, I've been asked, does this include hair salons and barbershops? I don't consider those to be essential businesses, and I know that's hurting a lot of us, including me. Um, but we've got to think about our, our long-term health and well-being in this city, and it's important that we just take a minute and separate so that we can get over the hump with this virus. On the line with us. Well, again, this is talking to the professionals about this. I was fortunate enough to have a conversation with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who is a resident of Atlanta. Also, again, Dr. Carlos Del Rio from Emory University. But they both said to me, it's important that people be able to get out and exercise and breathe. And, and it's just, it's as much about physical well-being as emotional and mental health as well. And so we are not closing the Beltline in our parks yet, but it's going to be up to the public to allow us not to close the Beltline. And I say that because people have to practice social distancing. If you get to the Beltline and you can't see your way clear to separate six feet from people, then you need to go find another path on the Beltline or another place to walk. So I want to be mindful that people are, are cooped up in the house and people, everyone doesn't have a backyard um, and people rely on the belt line as a transportation corridor and also as an exercise, a place to exercise. But we've got to be responsible and thoughtful so that we can leave this open. But it really is about allowing people an outlet. But if it, if it gets to the point that it's not healthy, for our city, then we'll ha have no other choice than to close it. We have to keep our airport open. Our airport is the largest economic and job center in our state with over 26,000 employees. So we've already begun working with Delta Airlines and many of our other airline partners to try and make sure that we can do some things contractually. For example, when their landing fees are due, we're working with our concessionaires to try and give them some relief because they hire a lot of our hourly employees. We've slashed some parking rates to help our parking operators. So we're trying to be very thoughtful and proactive in how we can help as we wait for federal relief. But there are thousands upon thousands of people who rely on Hartel Jackson for their livelihood. And whether it be our hourly employees or our major airlines, it's important that we continue to keep our airport up and running. But people, I think, recognize that this is unprecedented. We didn't, even when we faced the challenges of 9-11, we, we knew that there was an opportunity at some point for us to get up and running into the other side of this. This is the same, same thing with COVID-19. The difference is we can't see what we're fighting against. And so all we can do is look around the globe, see how other countries have been able to fight this epidemic, how they've been able to relieve the stress on their healthcare system, and hopefully all of our leaders are paying attention to the science and will resist the urge to be anxious to get back to business as usual quickly. 
because this is this is not normal and it's something that we've got to be patient with and it's going to be uncomfortable for so many of us for some of us it may you know it may be a huge economic hit because people are losing their jobs but what people have to understand if we don't have our health and our strength on the other side of this then an economic recovery means nothing if if we aren't alive to recover economically. Well, I do know that we are still woefully short, and hopefully that will begin to change because we're now going to some different methods of testing. But we're, we're testing hundreds of people a day. We need to be testing thousands of people a day. Part of it is to allow our health partners to even be able to track where these outbreaks are. So, you, so uh, there are people who are saying they can't get tested and... Um, and I gave an example of, of my dear friend whose mother is sick. Her father had been tested. She had tested positive. Her mother was showing all of the symptoms, could not get a test. She ended up going to the ER with shortness of breath, breath, shortness of breath, I'm sorry, and now um, intubated with pneumonia. And so we know that there are people who need these tests who don't have access to them. And however many we have in the state today, which I don't know the answer to that, what I do know is still not enough. 